Cheshire Catalyst, uh, also known as Richard Cheshire. And as one journalist put it, it's not his real name. It's not even his real pseudonym. <laughs> Let's see if I can find my talk today. CheshireCatalyst.com slash mobile.html. Ah, there it is. Programming your mobile phone for international calling. Things you should know about your phone. Uh, some notes from talks which can be found at this page. So if you print it out, you're handing them the copy of the page as well. Well, what we're going to talk about today are simple little mobile phones. I don't like the term cellular phones. Cellular describes the technology, and technology confuses most people. The Euros just call it mobile phones. That's all they are. Uh, that, the uh, that the towers have a cellular pattern to them. The public really doesn't have a need to know. There's no need to confuse them. They're confused enough already. My other pet peeve is when people uh, say, oh, call the 800 number. No, no. Please get in the habit. They are toll-free numbers. They are area codes 800, 888, 877, 866, 855, with more to come. They are toll-free area codes. Uh, start correcting your friends. That usually uh, helps me to remember it myself, because I've been known to slip as well. Well, let's start off with placing a mobile phone call overseas. Um, the United States, well, we invented the phones, so we're number one. Actually, so is Canada and most of the Caribbean. Uh, country code one is designated the North American numbering plan. First laid out by the Bell system in the 1940s for internal use, starting in the 50s, they started releasing it to the public under the trade name direct distance dialing. Well, let's see. The International Telecommunications Union is where you got to go to um, find out about such things. So now we're running out to a website in Geneva, Switzerland, where we find recommendation E1.164. E now, the International Telecommunications Union is the United Nations specialized agency. They speak to sovereign governments, um, since telecommunications is run by governments in most of the world, except the US and a few other places. The thing is, you cannot tell a sovereign government what you can do. You can only make recommendations. Of course, these recommendations pretty much have the force of treaties. Well, if we follow our way through, uh, we'll find that eventually you reach a place where there are PDFs with table of contents, and eventually you get to a place where they want to charge you for copies of the recommendations. When you're a sovereign government, not a problem. But looking for a list of the international country codes, and up comes the page with the nice ITU logo. Here we go. And it's going to cost you 26 Swiss francs to see that. CH, the two-letter country code for Switzerland, F for francs. So no, we don't want that. Thank you very much. So let's go to the Wikipedia version. <laughs> So the Wikipedia page for E.164, and all down the page, it gives you all sorts of information about the stuff and the list of country calling codes. Zone one being the North American numbering plan area, us, two, mostly Africa, some Atlantic islands, three and four, Europe, three is mostly Northern Europe, four is uh, Southern Europe, five for Mexico, Central America, South America, uh, French American dependencies, there's one off the coast of Canada that has a five code. Uh, Southeast Asia for Zone 6, Russia and Kazakhstan for Zone 7, East Asian Special Services for 8, West, South, and Central Asia and the Middle East for Zone 9. Uh, so you can all just visit Wikipedia for that information. Mm, let's see, Control W gets us back. Now, I don't particularly care for PowerPoint, so I write my presentations in HTML. Um, what I tend to do is then link my headlines to the next headline. So now we speak about country exit codes. Now, let's say I want to call a friend in Paris. Well, that's country code 33, one for Paris, 555-2368, let's say. Um, from the US, 
I would dial the North American exit code of 011. 3-3 three, three for France, 1 for Paris, 5-5-5 five, 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 to 3 six, eight. Let's say I stop off in Heathrow on the way over in London. There, I need to use 0-0, zero, zero, three, three, one, five, 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 two, three, six, eight, because in the CEP uh, countries, and that is the uh, Committee for European Posts and Telegraphs, um, well, telecommunications, excuse me, I, I harken back to olden times. Um, that's their website there. Zero, zero is used in Europe and in most of the rest of the world. Well, that's fine and dandy, but I want to put one phone number in my contact list in my mobile phone for this buddy of mine in Paris. The trick is to use the plus sign. In the 1970s, the ITU came up with this as a method for uh, mentioning a, uh, a country's exit code before a country code, and then the city code and the number. And so you would have business cards, for example, like this, um, plus one, three one one five 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 two three six eight and all you old phone freaks will recognize that number as being the number on the number plate in Bell System ads from say the 1930s on. Uh, they've always used five 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 two three six eight and then area codes came along they used three one one which has never been an area code and never will be etc. Um, so along come mobile phones in the 1990s and they said you know We've got this ITU standard that says just for printing them on business cards, use a plus sign. And since all of our mobile telephone switches are software defined, well, why don't we just use that same plus sign to be the, uh, the country exit code? And you just reach up to the network, uh, pull down whatever country exit code you need in that country, use that, and put the number through. It made sense. They did it anyway. So uh, what you can do is in the contact list of your overseas correspondents, take out the 011. Replace 011 with the plus sign character. It will be on your keyboard, either on the 0 or on the 1. You may have to hold down the 0 to get the plus sign or uh, some other little trick, but it will let you put a plus sign in there. For one thing, your carrier wants that revenue for that overseas call. <laughs> so they're going to make sure that their phones have the plus sign in there. Um, the wireless carriers uh, will tell you to dial the country exit code, but not to put it in your contact list. Uh, for example, let's just take a look at how Sprint says things. Um, they'll tell you to put it into the contact list. How do I make an international call? Um, and let's see. Let's control shift plus, is it? Uh, when calling country to country, dial the access code plus the country code. Uh, when calling within the country, blah, blah, blah. Uh, dial the plus key to automatically uh, dial that country's access code. Yeah. See, th they will tell you to dial the plus key to dial the country's, well, they call it access code, but it's the uh, code to exit that country's network. Plus the country code plus the phone number. And for Sprint provided Nokia GSM phones, press the plus key twice until a plus sign appears on your phone's display screen. So they're telling you how to dial it that way. They're not telling you to put it into your contact list. I'm the guy telling you to put it into your contact list. And no matter where in the world you are, if your phone works in the first place, it will put the call through. See, the nice thing is I can just click on the things in my HTML presentation, show you the different pages. Um, now, Verizon, again, I was here four years ago talking about Verizon, back in the days when I was a director of systems operator and I couldn't find them in my phone book. Their dialing instructions are to put the 011 plus 44, uh, the 12 or 13 digit local number. Well, keep in mind Verizon has CDMA phones. So their phones won't work overseas in most places. So they may as well just tell you to use 011. They do have a couple of things they call world phones. Um, a major investor in Verizon Wireless is an outfit called Vodafone. And they are very big in Europe in the cellular markets. So um, they have special arrangements if you're going overseas to use Vodafone service. Uh, 
Vodafone is in many places around the world. Uh, they, um, they're primarily in Europe, as I understand it. And uh, they do have the presence here through Verizon. And, oops, wrong button. Hang on. No, I don't want that now. Thank you very much. Mobile phones, here we go. Back on the road again. So let's just. Um, okay, so as seen on the phone, a buddy of mine, actually Mitch, who uh, went to China and got the manufacturer to make the Hope badges, he was in China about his TV Be Gone, worked with him on our badges as well. Uh, the RFID badges. So while he was there, since his uh, mobile number, uh, he had sent the mobile number of his Chinese cell phone, the one he had rented over there, uh, to our, our list, I text messaged him and asked him to please send me all the digits as they show up of my phone number. And he told me that my phone number came back 001321, my Florida area code, plus the rest of my phone number. 00 being the exit code from China, going to a North American one, no, North American numbering plan, North American number, and then my number. When he responded to me uh, in my caller ID, his text message came from 011, which uh, was the exit code for me if I wanted to reply to him, 86 for China, plus the digits of his phone number. So uh, again, the plus sign should be used because uh, that way the phone call or the text message will go through no matter where it's placed in the world. Uh, here's my rant about uh, never calling it an 800 number because of all the various toll-free area codes that are available. And uh, dial the exit code followed by the country code of the number as you would from uh, an international call from that country. By the way, back up here, I had an example of a British phone number. Oh, we're going to have that now. Um, here, plus four four for the UK. But on UK business cards, what you'll find is they have a zero in parentheses. And this was part of the ITU specification as well. Um, a number for the national service of your nation's phone network. If you're in the UK, you don't need the four four country code, of course, but you do need zero in front of the number to access uh, what was then STD, standard trunk dialing. I think with the controversies of sexually transmitted disease, they're not using that particular acronym anymore. But, um, but for the standard trunk dialing, as it was called at one time, you do need to dial zero before the city code, 778 in this case, and, and then the rest of the number. So the zero was used in the national service. Today, you could probably get away with just having the plus four four seven seven eight. Uh, one for, you know, and the number uh, in your contact list without the zero in it to have it work within England. I do not know anybody I can ask to try that for me, so I can't be certain of that, but uh, I would dare say that the uh, cellular networks over there are cognizant of how to set things up for international dialing and would allow this through. Uh, let's see. Um, just other stuff. I spent a year as a technician for Verizon Wireless down in Florida. And uh, one of the things we like to recommend to people is it is not a good idea to talk on your mobile phone while it's plugged in, just for battery charging reasons. Uh, if you should, you should do this only if your battery is so low you feel the call will be cut off unless outside power is provided. The reason being the lithium ion batteries in the mobile phones uh, have a limited number of chargers to them. So you jack it in, you have a full charge. Well, now you talk on the phone. While you're talking, the charge level comes below a threshold that says, oh, well, I should start charging the phone now. And there goes another of those finite number of charges gone away. And it reaches the top while you're still talking. So it stops charging. And you're still talking and you know using up some battery. And a few minutes later, the threshold goes, oh, I guess I can start charging again now. And there goes another one of those finite number of charges gone away. So you should unplug the phone when you're talking on it unless the charge is so low 
you'd be cut off. I like to use Bluetooth headsets. I've lost mine this weekend, um, sorry to say. But um, Bluetooth headsets use low power to go from your ear to your phone, which is within 30 feet of you. Bluetooth only works on a range of about 30 feet. And um, usually you're, it's a lot closer to you than that. It's, you're usually holding it, or it's in your little pocket, or whatever else. It doesn't take that much power to get there, compared to the amount of power going from the phone to the nearby towers. I don't know about you. I'm an old ham radio operator. I don't like having that much transmitting power that close to my head. So I much prefer Bluetooth headsets to having the phone up to my head. In fact, what I actually, this is, it's, it's a long story why I've got two phones, but usually what I'll do is I'll put it on speakerphone with the little speaker on the other side of the handset, and I'll talk this way because I can still hear, but I don't have to hold the phone as close to my head when I don't have the headset handy. Uh, any questions? It's, uh, yes. Oh, my web address here is CheshireCatalyst.com, C-H-E-S-H-I-R-E-C-A-T-A-L-Y-S-T.com, and the page is slash mobile.html. And, um, well, let's see, we can probably knock this back a bit to just bring up the home page. And uh, amazing shoulder surface since 1975. Now I have a friend who I refer to as subtlety impaired. And it's now the term I use to speak of the FBI and other three letter agencies. But he didn't know what a shoulder surfer was and couldn't figure it out from just hearing it. A shoulder surfer is someone who watches you over your shoulder as you surf the ARPANET crossed out internet. I just had to throw in that I'm so old school that I you know, did hack the ARPANET way back when. Um, and then somebody asked me about a, a question about my leadership position in the computer hacker community, so I came up with this. I am not a leader. I am a loner with people who happen to follow me. Then a buddy of mine had to pipe up and sent me this John Quincy Adams quote, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Well, let me tell you, it's more by accident than design in my case. Um, also, I needed some help to get here and uh, had my, some of my neckties on eBay. I, since I no longer work for Verizon Wireless, I no longer have to wear ties. And I've, I've amassed a small collection of telephone ties. Did anyone here win any of my ties? Because I sold three of them. Okay, I'll have to ship these on Wednesday after I get home. Uh, this one I was particularly proud of. It's got the ATS-6 on it, uh, the satellite. It's got a, a Block 1 GPS and a whole bunch of 80s technology. Um, this one, you'll notice, has the uh, bell system symbol upside down. I happen to have them with me. And the few that have not been sold on eBay are now available, if you want to come up and see me after the talk. Uh, also, I do have um, time for show and tell. Uh, I've got my little ebook, which is basically a bunch of my web pages all in one place, collected from my various websites. And I hope they haven't all fallen out. They may have. Hmm. In which case, or are they being hidden, obscured by? Well, I still have the flash drive version. I had the CD-ROMs for fifth. No, oh, they're all in the bag here. Here they are. So I have a CD-ROM version of Cheshire's book, and the book is called "Of Course There Are Secrets." They're in the manual uh, on CD-ROM or on flash drive. One gigabyte flash drive, CD-ROM for fifteen, flash drive for twenty. And uh, see me after the talk. Um, any further questions, General? Yes. The question being about uh, the lithium ion batteries and how many charges do they really have, um, generally it's got about a year's worth. Uh, they're supposed to last about a year to a year and a half. And if you can go two days between charges, it's going to last that much longer. 
So, um, you know. Not that I've been able to figure out, no. And while working at Verizon, I noticed some people coming back with batteries from brand new phones within a month. And I suspect there may have just been a bad batch of batteries out of Korea, because they're mostly out of Samsung phones. Um, so if you do have a major problem with a battery, uh, take it back to your carrier and, and complain. And you know, if the technician knows what he's doing, he may just swap you out the battery. Uh, at Verizon, we had a time scale that was six months old. We'd give you 50% off on a new battery, and you know, so on and so forth. But uh, it was pretty much up to the discretion of the technician. Yes? Do you know William Chang, the Chinese electric engineer? Do you know William Chang, the Chinese electrical engineer? I don't believe I know the person in question. No. Sorry. Anyone else? Okay. Well, I've got some extra time. A um, couple years ago when I was here, uh, let's see, back uh, where we were talking about Verizon, ah, now that, the talk six years ago was my directory assistance talk. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for right now. Um, flashtalk.html. My talk two years ago on Flash sucks for advertisers. Well, guess what? It still does. Um, what really, really got me pissed this year. Now, over the past couple years, I get these uh, emails from Pepsi with all these contests and things that I should click up and it all says, once I get there, get Flash or get gone. So I get gone. But this year, their stepchild, Mountain Dew, has a website that they put up as a promotion called oldschoolornew.com. Well, damn it, my computer is old school, and I can't see your flash site. So I'm going to see if I can't get over to Advertising Age magazine uh, this week and talk to somebody about that and let them know about that. Let's see. Now, um, because Greg had another speaker uh, going on YouTube, he needed to install the flash. Let's just see. Oldschoolornew.com. May actually work this time. Yeah, but you see how long it takes to load the damn software to to run the thing. And um, how much of this crap do I really want to see anyway? Uh, if I just type in rules, uh, hang on. Rules.php, I found out, would at least let me look up the rules without having to put up with all of this stuff. Well, maybe not. Let's kick it again, see what happens. Okay, forget about it. We're going to go back. It's taken over my machine. Okay, so much for that. Okay, there is a website called flashsucks.org. This is a great site because it explains that it's a great tool if used well, but it sucks for visitors, sucks for disabled people, and sucks for search engines. These advertising agencies should know better. And I am very proud to say that right down here, my webpage is linked to from flashsucks.org. Come back to my page again. Uh, but also on this page, if you want to be in control of Flash, you can go to flashblock.mozdev.org and download a Flash blocker. Because a lot of the, uh, the Flash stuff you just really don't need. Um, one of my web pages is, I used to have singularracing.com. I now have att31racing.com, or att31.com. 
because uh, I was so grateful to Bell Sub Ability for my phone number, which I believe I've explained. Um, my phone number is 321 Liftoff. And that's because it's my area code. We can go into that another time. Um, but they were kind enough to give it to me in the days before number portability, and I was always grateful to Bell Sub Mobility, which has now morphed into AT&T. So I've, I keep up a fan website of the, uh, the team. Uh, since a member of the Coke Racing family won the race of the Coca-Cola Zero 400, you can uh, click this and get a coupon for free Coke Zero. Why you'd want one, I don't know. Um, but down here, uh, I'm one of the few places, even the fan websites, that keep track of the associate sponsors on a NASCAR. Because it's all advertising. And really, my interest isn't in the cars that go fast and turn left. My interest is in the advertising. Um, there's an old-fashioned concept called the use map, where I can click on something here, and this will go to the Snap-on website. I can click here and go to the GM card website. And that seems fairly obvious. I kind of left in the Easter egg that if you click on Jeff Burton's signature up here, it'll go to jeffburton.com. Unfortunately, his needs flash. So. I like to say that they're saying, get Flash or get gone. And I guess I didn't have the right version of Flash since um, it didn't come up. Yeah, he thought I didn't have Flash. So I must have not had the right version. Oh, and Firefox prevented the site from opening a pop-up window. So they're doing all kinds of nasty things that I don't really want them to do. But he's our driver this year, so I support him. And. Uh, if you're into NASCAR, though, jsky.com is where things are uh, informationally on NASCAR. And, hmm, okay, I guess he's not working this week, so. Well, it is a bye week for NASCAR. They aren't running this week. Um, and the clever thing I do, if you do a uh, view source on this web website, and look, the Allstate 400 is coming up. It doesn't have finished the starting positions because it hasn't run yet. Uh, but if you do view source, uh, control F all state, you'll see I've got the races for the rest of the year actually in this file, but remarked out. My regular cell phone is my Trio 650. I've got the SIM card in the other one because this one has Cheshire's, the SIM card from Cheshire's line in here. I need the full QWERTY keyboard for messaging to run volunteer coordination this weekend. Uh, what the trail also has is an FTP program, File Transfer Protocol. I can download the web page, edit it on the phone, and send it back up. Of course, um, I can't always get to it in time. Uh, what I'd like to do, hmm? question? What I'd like to do is uh, actually change the finished position add the cup points and add up the, uh, the series total for the year before Jayski sends me the text message with the results and have it up on the net while sitting at my local bar watching the race. You'll also notice these little dots down here. The first dot is where the entry list will be. If you look up, it's uh, entry underscore list dot HTML. If I actually knock this back from slash 20, to slash 19 for the 19th race, the last race, that's populated with the entry list for the last race. And if we want to, we can go to lineup. And there was the lineup for the last race. These are all derived. It just changes the race number. So anyone who wants to uh, hack around on my web page we'll find that these dots go to these other pages. And if I haven't gotten around to updating the page and they want the information, they can click on the dots and do that. I left that for hackers to find. Um, just because, you know, if I'm too lazy to get to the information, they should still be able to find the information. So you'll have to forgive me. I'm simply ego tripping here. <laughs> and I thank you for your patience. Any other questions? Yes. Since I have not traveled overseas in more than a decade, no, I have not done the research. 
on uh, putting other countries' SIM, cons, SIM cards into my phones. Uh, what research I have done is just swapping sw SIM cards in my phone, and mine is an unlocked Trio 650. So I have put T-Mobile cards into it, and they've worked here in the States. I've, uh, well, I've swapped between two AT&T phones, and so now you know, the lines are swapped, uh, so I could, you know, where I need to do heavy-duty data on the other guy's line, I can do it and then swap the SIM cards back and be on, on my line again. Um, right now, I'm, I'm on Twitter primarily just for the weekend because there's some hope people on, on Twitter. And so I went up on Twitter and changed which phone number it was going to so that it's back on the phone with the QWERTY keyboard again. Uh, and then I'll go back, change the phone number there, then swap the SIM cards, and I'm back on you know, still the same phones. A little bit of keeping track of things. But uh, the phones, if it's an unlocked phone particularly, it will accept other SIM cards. So I assume it would accept them for overseas use as well. I haven't seen any, I don't know of any particular problems, but I haven't traveled and I haven't uh, really looked into it. Um, living in the Cape Canaveral area, Port Canaveral is a major cruise ship port. We have a little cyber cafe on the side of the local mall where the little jitney buses pull up with the crews who are off duty from those ships. It's their cyber cafe. They go in, they buy a phone card. I think they also buy SIM cards in there. And you know, they place calls all over the world. They've got phones all over the place for people to just phone home. And for those who have cell phones that they want to use, uh, they do sell SIM cards as well. So you know, major international cities, you're going to find places like that. Here, I'd say ask the concierge you know, in this hotel. And I'm sure you can point you somewhere. Um, overseas, same thing. Ask the concierge. Yes? Can you talk about what was involved getting the area code? Oh, do I have to tell that again? You're going to force me to ego trip? OK. Well, back around September of 98, the, public, the Florida Public Service Commission decided that they had to split 407. Uh, they were running out of exchanges like everywhere else, and they had to hold the Public Service Commission hearing. They put a little notice out in the newspaper, which I happened to catch, but I looked at my schedule. No, nah, got to work that night. Sorry. So I didn't go. Well, nobody else went either. And when it finally hit the newspaper that there was a Public Service Commission hearing about splitting the area code, huge uproar. Everyone called Tallahassee. Well, they decided to schedule a second round of hearings. So it's going to be in Orlando, and it's going to be uh, this Thursday, and then uh, yeah, i got to work that day, too. Well, if they're going to the extra trouble, I should at least get up on the internet. And uh, let's see. Being a phone freak, I know there's such a thing as NANPA.org, North American Government Plan Administration. NANPA.org, uh-huh. And um, let's see. Oh, there's the list. Uh -huh. Now, you know the list. 201 New Jersey, 202 DC, blah, 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 blah. And the gaps are marked available for geographic relief. OK. And if you were marked, uh, easily recognizable number. These usually end in double digits. 433, 455, blah, blah, blah. OK. So I'm looking down the list, and I come across 321. Why does that strike a familiar? Oh, of course, countdowns. Wait a minute. I live in the countdown capital of the world. Hey, I want that number. Time to bring down the web browser, time to bring up the word processor, and begin preparing my testimony for the Public Service Commission hearing. But well, was held in the Orlando City Hall, in the City Council Chambers. And I was scared shitless. I mean, it was too obvious. Well, it was too obvious to somebody who was both a phone freak and a space cadet. It was not obvious to anybody else in the room. Until I got up to present my testimony. And once I pointed it out, it was instantly obvious. The one chairman, or the, the one commission member said, you know, we like to have this kind of sugarcoating to put on the bad news that people uh, get that they have to change their area code. This is a great idea. And the really interesting thing was that the chairman of the commission came up to me after the meetings. And she said, you know, sir, we went to NANPA and we requested such a list as you provided in your testimony that you got off the internet. And they told us it was proprietary. I want to thank you very much for your testimony. And you know what? Mere personal conjecture? I think she went back to NANPA. I think she reamed them a new one. 
and got us the area code. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that's pretty much the story. Um, well, then I wake up one morning, and of course, I've always tuned to NPR. Morning Edition, I live for Morning Edition. I'm so bad, I answer their pledge phones. So I'm listening to Pat Duggins, the local guy on Morning Edition. The, you may know the name from his space coverage. They, they picked that up nationally. And um, Pat starts off the day by saying, it's official, the next area code will be the last three digits of dash notes here one day. Yes, okay, I got it, it's mine. Well, I asked for it, they approved it. That makes it my area code, right? But I share. But there was one thing I wanted. So I dialed the number. The number you have reached at Bell Sub Ability is not currently in service. Cool. I run down to the kiosk at the mall. Hi, I'd like 543-8633, please. Well, she calls up the Melbourne office. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, sir, but the boys in Melbourne tell me that that number is in the middle of a hundred group on a corporate rate. It's totally unavailable. Oh, okay. So I go home. I power up the web browser. Mm, Bellsobability.com. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, about the company. Uh ah, Mark Fiedler is the president of the company. That might be nice to know. Mm-hmm. But I don't have his email address. It's certainly not here in his bio. And, oh, press room. Okay, let's go look over the press releases. Maybe I'll have a release about the three. Two. Ah, there it is. The email address of a publicity flack. First name underscore last name at. Ah, compose two. Mark underscore Fiedler at dear Mr. Fiedler. Blah blah blah. My area code. Blah blah blah. May I please have five four three eight six three three, so that as of October first, nineteen ninety nine, my phone number will be three two one liftoff. Send. Oh. I look at my watch and it's 6.30 p.m. on a Friday. I can't possibly hear from this guy until, what, Monday, probably Tuesday. Sunday afternoon, ding, you have new mail. Sure, I'll get my people on it. And so I got the phone number. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. What's the difference between the red flag?